felt that the store and its surroundings still held their secrets, and he didn't like to miss out. thought he would be dancing with the wolves.
The crossbow bolts had the same origin. Carl was sure of it. Who was it? And more importantly, what was being hunted like this? Cabin B. Lots of space. No windows. Hopefully its users aren't prone to dementia. Without a single window to brighten things up, the inside of the cabin was almost pitch black. Beware of close encounters of knee and furniture. Solitaire, a card game only hermits can truly enjoy. Carl felt depressed at the thought of playing this. Everything was set up for a well-deserved snack. It seemed like the place hadn't been empty for long, but without knowing exactly why, Carl had the feeling no one was coming back anytime soon.
store and its surroundings still held their secrets, and he didn't like to miss out. There should be a law forbidding doctors from falling sick. In spite of Dr. Beaupre's goodwill, the place didn't look much like a physician's office. It could easily be mistaken for a sewing shop.
Someone had lost a few liters of blood here. Carl's first thought had been a lumber accident, someone's hand cut by a saw, or a hunting accident. In any case, whoever had lost all this blood couldn't have gone far. Perhaps they were already dead. The injured could be recognized by the large stains of red, an informal nickname given to Merbromen, smudged all over their injuries. There was no doubt that the doctor and Hamilton knew each other very well. Doctors used light-reflecting frontal mirrors to look inside the patient's cavities. That was a bit unsettling, but back then, it was pretty much always the case with medicine. Dr. Bopede had done his medical studies quite far from here. He was surely one of the first students out of the new campus to settle on the mountainside. A communist manifesto. Only a few years ago, this type of allegiance meant prison time. And even at present, the Western world was very wary of the Soviet threat. Why would the doctor own such a book? A chamber pot. Fortunately for Carl, inspecting it wouldn't further this particular investigation. Carl got the trembles as he imagined the excruciating pain that kind of scalpel could no doubt inflict. Within these miserable walls, patients probably felt more like in a slaughterhouse than in a doctor's office. For the one-eyed, or for other vision problems, the eye patch was the way to go. Great care had to be taken searching this place full of oddities. Everything was important. The decor itself told a story.
Carl, ever diligent in his work, always carried his log on him, in which he scribbled down thoughts and leads alike during the course of his investigations. Je m'attendais pas à ce qu'un étrange retourne ici par ici. Moi te dire, je prends plus de chance depuis que ça rôde dans ce bout là. J'ai ma carabine au bout du doigt et puis bang 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 si ça s'approche. <rire> Si tu veux du linge chaud, parce que t'es habillé comme un gars de la ville, je dirais pas non à une bonne bouteille de caribou. Puis tu pigeras ce que tu voudras parmi mes guenilles. <rire> oh C'est vrai, le jeune, que tu te promènes quasiment en bobette. Une bonne police, ça te ferait pas de tort. Mais je vais te dire une chose, dans ton coin de pays comme Paris 7, on n'a rien sans rien. Et où, mon caribou envie de te marier, la Corivo. À tuer tous ces maris. Squeak, les uns après les autres. Pas de pitié dans le mariage. Vois-tu le livre, là? C'est le Wendigo. Ouais, le Wendigo. Un guerrier qui devient un loup pour se venger de sa grosse peine. Et 